Look at these steam engines here. There's nothing I can't fix on any of these, given a bit of time and the tools to do so. And the manufacturers are long gone. Here, this black one here, that's, uh, that's nearly 200 years old. Still working, still working without any manufacturers backing. Try that on your modern big adventure bike these days, or any big bike for that matter. You just can't break that umbilical cord with the uh, dealers. I think having service plans, servicing, and the reliance on those dealers, we're all stuck with them now, aren't we? We're absolutely stuck with them. We're linked to those dealers for services and access to special tools and special software. Are we going backwards? Well, we are compared to these engines anyway. These big expensive bikes, they're like being tied to an umbilical cord to the dealer, aren't they? You, you, you just wouldn't take that to an independent dealer. They're not going to have software. They're not going to have the tools to, I don't know, repair the shaft drive if it's a recall or anything like that. So I'm tied to the BMW dealer with this bike. Now, I don't mind that uh, because BMW do something brilliant. Uh, for this GS uh, and all the other 1250s, I can get a five-year, 50,000-kilometer service package for, I've got to look at my notes now, <laughs> <laughs> 1210 euros or alternatively a three-year one for 840 euros and if i had uh, an 850 gs i could get a five-year package for 1010 euros or 690 euros if i wanted a three-year package and they're published on the configurator on the bmw website now that's in the uk and ireland i'm sure they do that in a lot of other places in europe other places around the world who knows whether they do that or not but that's kind of part of the manufacturer's war on attracting customers. I bought this GS, and one of the things that attracted it to me was the service package, that five-year service package, or three-year service package. Because you are tied by an umbilical cord to the dealer. So I decided to have a look around and see what other people offer in terms of warranty and service packages, and, or what sort of deals they're offering, or what sort of services they're offering, along with their bike. So, that's this one. That's BMW done and dusted. They give you a three-year or a five-year fixed-price servicing package, a three-year warranty in this neck of the woods, and then you can increase your warranty uh, uh, year by year if you want to do that afterwards. Let's see who else offers stuff. Well, Ducati and all their Multistradas now, in this Geo anyway, they're offering four-year warranties on all their bikes. So that's not bad. Uh, I'm going to go into servicing stuff a bit later. Let's just concentrate on warranty a lot. Uh, most places or a lot of places are just doing two-year warranties. Suzuki uh, in this neck of the woods do a three-year warranty. What else have we got? Yeah, Ducati on the Desert X, it's a four-year warranty and four years on the Multistradas and the likes of that. That's great. You know, you know, that's some value. That's some value. But who else does something a bit different with warranty? Let's look. KTM. Okay. L listen to this. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to read a bit off here now. KTM 1290 platform extended, uh, you can extend your warranty to 12 years, 80,000 kilometers. Uh, if parts are required within that warranty period, after 50,000 kilometers, you pay 50% of the cost of the parts. Wow. Now that's only certain countries. So in this instance for KTM, it's Belgium, Germany, France, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Austria, Poland, Slovenia, Slovakia, Spain, Switzerland, Czech Republic, or Hungary. So Ireland and the UK can do whatever they want to do themselves, apparently. Uh, but uh, look, it's there. That's, that's quite a significant offering. Now, it depends how much it costs, of course. You want to check with your KTM dealer how much, that, uh, how much it is to extend that. But I believe you can do that year by year. Now, it is, of course, dependent that you do get your bike serviced at a proper KTM dealer. So you're paying for those services. But uh, why wouldn't you? I mean, Ducati did do something called Ever Red Extended and you could add another two years warranty to their two year bikes. But as I say, a lot of the adventure bikes now, well, I think all of them in this neck of the woods anyway, are four year warranty. So uh, that's kind of uh, neither here nor there now. Aprilia, I looked that up. You can extend the warranty by one year or two years as long as it's within certain mileage limits. Uh, you can extend by 12 months if it's within 31,000 miles or 24 months if it's within 37,000 miles. Uh, there's a price to that, of course, but, you know, that's something some people may go for. Honda offer a one-year or a two-year extended warranty. I picked up some pricing for that. This is UK pricing now, €339 Euros for one year or €539 Euros for two years, and that's on 800cc Models Plus. Okay, that's something someone might consider. Being that it's a Honda, though, would you? Yeah, maybe not, maybe not. Depends how you feel about these sort of things. 
Here, here's one for you though. Uh, but Suzuki in the UK specifically do something pretty amazing. Uh, well, is it amazing actually? Yeah, we might, there might be a bit of a catch to that. But if you continually get your bike serviced as per the service schedule with a Suzuki, in the UK, this is specifically the UK now, Suzuki GB offer this, they'll keep extending your warranty. So you get a code off your dealer every time you get your bike serviced and then they'll keep extending your warranty out a year, a year, a year. Now, it, it, the, the only catch to that is, is that you must follow the Suzuki service schedule. And uh, on those new, I just looked up two bikes and I thought I'd look up two latest ones. The Suzuki 800DE, the off-road one, and the 1000DE, the two new bikes. And the oil change schedule is 6,000 kilometers. Uh, that's not much. You, you can end up doing a couple of services. Uh, you can end up doing a couple of services every year. You can end up doing three services a year. Uh, I, if you're mad into getting your bike serviced with the service schedules and stuff like that, I think that's a great deal. I do think that's a great deal. I mean, you know, you could have one major electronic component go down and that could be thousands of euro to change, you know. So, well, it'll be pounds in that case because it's the UK, <laughs> but... That, that's that's something to take into account. I, I don't see anyone else doing that at the moment. I have to say, that that gets a bit of a medal, I think. But if you were doing low mileage on your Suzuki and just getting it annually serviced, those cheap services, that's actually not a bad deal to get a seven-year warranty out of your bike if if you if you're that way inclined, you know. What about service packs? Well, uh, I'll tell you. <laughs> I haven't found anyone to beat that BMW price. Just just no one. No one at all. Um, what have we got? Uh, Triumph say they do service packs and on their UK website, but it's like contact the dealer. Now, they, they used to have more detail on their website, on their UK website, and they'd have different types of packs depending on what sort of mileage uh, rider you were and stuff like that. But I've noticed that detail's drop back off their website and, and I think that's probably pushback from dealers saying look don't start telling bloody customers they can buy a service pack because you know it costs us too much to, to sell these things because they're quite competitive but so you but if you individually look around a Triumph dealer some of them do offer fixed price servicing and discounts for getting it serviced in the winter and stuff like that but you know you don't seem to be able to just walk into a Triumph shop and pull off a fixed price service pack for three years or five years off the shelf uh, like you can with BMW so uh, I think this is where things are going this is where things are going people are saying okay it's one thing buying the bloody bike but how much is it going to cost me to maintain it all right we've all got to buy tires and chains well, well I don't well I do and the other actually we've all got to buy tires and brake pads and stuff like that but how much is our annual servicing going to cost us with the manufacturer if we want to do that sort of thing Honda offer a scheduled or an annual service uh, and that really depends whether you're a high mileage or a low mileage user so that's uh, I, again I picked up Honda UK pricing it's so difficult to pick up pricing everywhere you can't find that pricing here in Ireland uh, because I'm not even sure it's actually done here but in the UK you can get a pack for $6.99 or a pack for $4.99 and basically that's the first break-in service plus two services um, if the service includes a valve check it includes that but but and, and here's a real gotcha if the uh, shims need changing obviously that's a camshaft out job and replacement shims and they're saying the shims and the labor for doing that are extra now that that could be hours and hours of labor so that could be hundreds of pounds or hundreds of euros on top of your uh, fixed price servicing pack so I think that's a bit of a cop-out actually I think that's a bit crap what did Ducati do in terms of servicing? Right, I couldn't find any fixed price service plans from Ducati, but what they do do is transparent service pricing, where you can look up a sheet, if we look and I'll go and look at a Multistrada V4S, you can look at servicing times, and you should ask your dealer, do you adhere to the Ducati transparent service pricing? So they list how many hours each service should take, and what needs doing in that service and this is the labor 
So you can go to your dealer at least and say, okay, you're charging me for my air filter and my oil filter and my oil and stuff like that. But the maximum charge on labor should be this or this or this, depending on which service it is. I think that's very commendable. And if I was Ducati Marketing, I would get the dealers to put up a great big banner on their window saying, we use transparent Ducati service pricing methods. I should be a marketeer. That's catchy as fuck. And it just takes all the grief out of it. Like, am I going to get ripped off? Am I not going to get ripped off? No. This is our, this is our hourly rate. We're going to charge you an hour and 20 minutes for this service. Plus your oil filter, your air filter and stuff like that. And that's it. No grief. Easy. So they're just a few snippets of what people are doing in different geos. So look, some, you know, some places are going to do this, some aren't. Like, you know, in, in different parts of the world, there's different importers and there are different legal identi identities and whether they offer those price packs or not, you've got to check in your local market. But uh, as, look, I could have bought any one of 10 bikes when I bought this bike. So people have got to do something different. Okay, yes, I bought this bike on uh, a lot of its attributes. But the, the servicing thing was a big thing for me too, because I got stung for a bloody massive valve service on my last bike. And I, I really was, I was smarting when I left the place and it, it left a bad taste in my mouth. A lot of companies don't seem to have uh, service packages or anything like that, uh, but I was interested to see what KTM did and uh, maybe uh, what Husqvarna did with the Norden 901. And unsurprisingly, <laughs> it came out that, uh, yeah, they have a 15,000 kilometer service interval uh, but they do have a table for every single bike in their range and they tell you how many minutes the service is going to last. So for instance, a 15,000 kilometer service, which is 9,300 miles on a Norden 901 is 118 minutes to 168 minutes. Now, I don't know why there's a bit of a ban there, but look, that's what they're saying. So at least you can say, right, OK, a maximum of 168 minutes. It should be no more labor than that at a 15,000 mile service. Uh, similarly, a 30,000 kilometer service on an Norden 901 between 174 and 230 minutes of service time. So again, at least it's putting some sort of uh, limit, some sort of label on the actual labor time, uh, which, you know, but, uh, you know, uh, looking at that document, I, I bet there's loads of people that, 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 that don't reference that and they just put it in and have the service and pay the bill and be done with it. Out of interest for a 1290 Super Adventure S, their 30,000 kilometer service, 183 minutes to 241 minutes. Uh, 15,000 kilometer service, they're looking for between 98 minutes and 151 minutes. It's great that they produce those, but it'd be nice if they told us why, why there's a difference, why there's a band. What is it? Well, one when the master technician's doing it, one when the apprentice is doing it, maybe. I don't know. At least it's something though. At least it's published. So let's have a look at some of this servicing stuff, what people are doing a bit different. Okay, first off, I've already said, Suzuki, V-Strom, the new V-Strom 1000DE and uh, 800DE. Go to Suzuki Island or Suzuki GB or Suzuki Europe website. Can you find out what the service interval is on those new bikes? No, but I went to uh, the US Suzuki USA website and they have their service schedule. Listen to this, this is a good one. All right. Oil change every 6,000 kilometers. That's quite short. This is getting quite common though. You know what it is? A lot of these off-road bikes, they're trying to go for a shallower sump, have less oil in the sump. Uh, that Aprilia I had the other day only has about something like 2.3 liters of oil in the engine. So, you know, worthwhile changing that quite regularly. Well, the Suzuki DE and things like the Tiger 900, they've all got quite small sumps. But interestingly, and this is something Honda do as well, Suzuki don't want you to change the oil filter with every oil change. They're saying, look, 6,000 kilometers for the oil change and then 18,000 kilometers. So every third oil change, change the oil filter. Now, before you put a comment down and go, oh my God, you know, you're going to ruin the engine. They want to sell you a new engine. No, no. the oil filter is, is, is going to be fine for 18,000. Just leave it in there. Suzuki know what they're doing. Now, Honda on most of their bikes do an oil, uh, oil filter change every other oil change. And I know a lot of people say, 
oh, I look for the price of it, $10 or 10 bucks or 10 euros, whatever it is. Why wouldn't you just do the oil filter? The oil filter is not getting clogged up on that first, on that first service. And, and that's what Suzuki and that's what Honda is saying, saying. In fact, they might even argue the saying that as the filter gets older, it filters ever smaller and smaller uh, particles out. And so we're better off leaving that filter in for a longer period. So yeah. what else we've got? We've got air filter on that Suzuki. Let's say, uh, again, I'm back on this Suzuki 800D. Air filter, 18,000 kilometers. Valve service, 24,000 kilometers, not bad. Spark plugs, 12,000 kilometers. Yeah, you just completely ignore that. <laughs> you know, and just, and just, just leave them in. I mean, that's just, that's just creating labor at your dealer to strip off all the tank and everything like that to check the spark plugs. Uh, there was a stupid spark plug uh, service on my last Tiger 1200. And it, it was ridiculous. It was the dealer taking off all the plastics, the petrol tank, everything like that, just to check the uh, spark plugs. That's something like 16,000 kilometers, you know, complete waste of time. I noticed on the new Tiger 1200, they've dropped that because there isn't a bloody spark plug that won't last that long. And that was just creating billable bloody revenue for the dealer. And to be honest, the dealers didn't want to faff around with all that malarkey anyway either. So it's great to see Triumph have dropped that on the new Tiger 1200. What else we got? Yeah, so Suzuki are also looking for an annual service if you don't reach those mileages. Like most people, except, except Ducati. Now, oh, I love this Ducati. What are they doing? They're doing. On the Multistrada V4S, right? We've got an oil change at 15,000 kilometers. Oil filter, 15,000 kilometers. Air filter, 30,000 kilometers. Valve service, 60,000 kilometers. Spark plugs, 60,000 kilometers. Okay, they know those spark plugs are gonna last perfectly well. There's no point in pulling this bike apart to change the spark plugs. Might as well wait until they do the valve service. But what's better about this is that if you haven't reached your uh, 15,000 kilometers, let's say you're at 8,000 kilometers, it's right, right, don't change the oil and don't change the oil filter. Just go in for your annual service, leave the oil, leave the oil filter. There's nothing wrong with it. Save yourself a good 60, 70, 80 euros for an oil change and, you know, an oil filter. You know, they're being realistic. So the oil and oil filter have a two year uh, service interval. So if at the end of the two years, uh, you still haven't done your 15,000 kilometers and they're saying, okay, let's change it now. That's reasonable. Let's have a look at the chart and see how they do this. So let's look, let's take a, a, a V4 as an example here. So uh, you bought your bike, uh, you go back in the first thousand kilometers and you get your oil service. And that is a maximum labor charge of one hour, plus the cost of the oil and stuff like that. Fine, brilliant. Now you go back after year one and you get your annual service. And if you haven't done 15,000 kilometers, your service is just an annual service at 30 minutes labor. If you have done 15,000 kilometers, um, it's a full oil service, but the labor is still just one hour, 30 minutes. That's absolutely brilliant. Either way, regardless of the mileage, um, every two years, there's an oil service anyway. So you'll have your first oil service, maybe a cheap annual service, the next service will be a full oil service, but we're still only talking one hour, 30 minute in our transparent maintenance table. And then we just keep alternating then between a 24 month oil service and an annual service. Again, as I say, if you're doing less than 15,000 kilometers a year. The only time it gets larger is when you hit that 60,000 kilometers and you hit that big Desmo service. But even then they're saying the maximum labor on your Desmo service is five hours, 18 minutes. Uh, what if I need an annual service or an oil service at the same time? Again, they lay that out for you and they're saying, right, uh, maximum on that uh, V4 is six hours, 48 minutes. That's for your full Desmo service and your annual or your oil service. That's absolutely brilliant. The only thing that's an addition to any of those is brake and clutch fluid um, every uh, couple of years and they've given a cost on that 36 minutes extra labor. So that's an extra 36 minutes every 24 months. And what are they saying? Fork 
yeah, front fork fluid here yeah, every 45,000 kilometers. Okay, we can kind of forget that. So that is as clear as anything. So as long as your Ducati dealer sticks to the Ducati transparent maintenance price, you're laughing. You know exactly what you're gonna pay for that service. All you need to ask them is, what's your hourly rate? Now that's obviously assuming they're not doing other stuff, you know, fitting alarms, changing brake pads and all that sort of stuff. But for the actual servicing side, it's there in black and white. That's it, brilliant. Tiger 1200. Uh, it's pretty much the same as it used to, uh, as, as the old one actually. 16,000 kilometers for an oil change, oil filter, uh, spark plugs, yeah, gone up to 32,000 kilometers. Um, valve check, 32,000 kilometers. So they're lumping everything in together with one service if we're going to take off all the plastics and the tank and everything like that. Who else we got? Now, Pan America. This is, this is an interesting one. Valve service, never. They're hydraulic. It's absolutely brilliant. And before you think, oh great, I'm gonna get dirt cheap servicing on my Pan America. No, they've got a very short service interval. So they're on, um, well, actually not as bad as Suzuki's, but they're on an 8,000 kilometer oil change along with the oil filter. Okay, I don't mind that so much. Check the air filter, valve service never. Spark plug, 16,000 kilometers or every two years. Now, that's, that's naff, that's completely naff you've got to take a fair bit of that bike apart to get to those uh, spark plugs because two of them are hidden you can see two of them but two of them are hidden under the tank i don't know what what spark plug doesn't last you know look look if if if, if ducati can get sixty thousand kilometers out of a spark plug surely harley can now i i can kind of sympathize or or kind of agree that maybe harley want that uh, eight thousand kilometer oil change because they do have hydraulic valve lifters and all that sort of stuff and maybe they want their oil to be absolutely as perfect as they can to make keep that reliable that's fair enough i suppose but you know you do need to watch out for that because you could end up going in and out of that dealer all the time if you do a lot of mileage ktm super adventure s where well, they're pretty average all around actually they're, it's quite nice Fifteen thousand kilometers for an oil change fifteen thousand for an oil filter uh air filter fifteen thousand Valve service, 30,000 kilometers, so a bit better than Triumph actually. Uh, spark plugs, 30,000 kilometers, seems perfectly reasonable. But if you don't reach those uh, limits, then yeah, yeah, still in for an annual service for an oil and filter change and all the usual other checks. Tiger 900, the oil change on that is 10,000 kilometers or 6,000 miles. That's because they've chopped the bottom of the sump of that, off that engine to try and make it shallow to give it a lot of um, uh, clearance. So the sump's small so the um capacity is quite small so it, it that it it's been driven by that oil service interval that ten thousand kilometers so that's what's driving that uh so they're just saying look okay do an oil filter at ten thousand air filter at 20 valve service at twenty thousand kilometers that's quite low that's quite low um i, I love that bike uh but if you're doing a high mileage on a tiger 900 um you're going to hit a lot of expensive valve services unless you know try and pull the finger out and provide a bit more fixed price servicing uh what else i picked up on the ducati v2s they do what they do on the v4s as well so fifteen thousand kilometers for an oil and oil filter change but only only if you've reached fifty thousand kilometers or two years so you can have an annual service with no oil change brilliant yeah, the Norden 901, yeah, 15,000 for an oil change, 15,000 for an oil filter, 15,000 kilometers for an air filter, valve service check, 30,000 kilometers, that's not bad, spark plugs, 30,000, or an annual service, whichever comes first, but the valve service, that's not bad. Africa Twin, thank God, they make it easy, Honda, 12,000 kilometers for an oil change, 24,000 kilometers for an oil filter change, uh, 24,000 kilometers for air filter, 24,000 kilometers for spark plugs and valve service easy peasy but they do have an annual oil and filter change as well if you don't reach the limits that's just so the uh, there's something for the dealer to bill you with yeah so uh, i have to say you do have to applaud ducati for doing that look don't change the oil and filter if you haven't reached the mileage or at least you know pushing out to two years at least so that's great now they charge a lot for their bikes that's another thing so <laughs> maybe they can afford to who else we got well, the Desert X is actually the same. The Desert X is the same as the V4S and the V2S. Uh, 15,000 kilometers, 
or every two years for your oil and filter change as well. So again, I, I like the idea of that. But also they've got that transparent service pricing as well. So across the board for Ducati, they're doing a great job. Hello, sir, and welcome to O'Keefe's Ducati. What can I do for you today? Hi there, yeah, just bringing in my V4S for its uh, first annual service. Ah, very good. And how's everything been for you, sir? I take it the bike's been fantastic. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's an awesome bike. I couldn't be happier with it. Love it, love it. Best bike I've ever owned. Yeah. Excellent. So if you leave it with us, uh, we'll have you done. Oh, probably, yeah, look, if you come back at five o'clock, we'll all be done and we'll get, uh, we'll get settled up. Uh, can I wait? It's, uh, it's just a 30 minute service. What's, what's that? It's, it's not even an oil change. Who told you it was a 30 minute service, sir? This is Ducati's flagship V4S bike. Uh, it'll be with us mm, to at least the middle of the afternoon. Yeah, the, the Ducati... Yeah, the uh, Ducati transparent maintenance chart tells me it's 30 minute service, no oil filter, no oil change. It's just a 30 minute service. I, I can, you know, I'll be in and out here in 40 minutes. All right, Dave, yeah. Yeah, another transparent customer. Yeah, wheel it in. Yeah, gives the keys, hand them over. Yeah, off you go, mate, off you go. Yeah, see you in half an hour. Thank you. Yeah, look, I'll, I'll get myself a coffee. What? No, sorry, mate. No, you, you don't get tea and coffee. No, not for a transparent service. No, and no, and you'll you'll have to wait outside as well. There's a bench out the front. What? It's pissing down my rain out there. Oh, it's raining. Oh, what are you gonna do? Yeah, boo hoo! It's raining. <laughs> So I can hear somebody out there saying, oh, look, I service my own GS. I changed my oil, oil filter, air filter. Yeah, maybe even the valve clearances. But anything electronically goes wrong with this bike and you're absolutely screwed. If it needs a software update, you're screwed. If it needs a specialist bit of machinery to uh, measure the shaft drive play to see whether the shaft drive needs replacing, you're screwed. So you are tied to BMW in your life of owning a modern GS anyway. There are some alternatives, of course, what are they? Take my Honda lump here, for instance. It'll never see a dealer. It'll never see a dealer in its life. This went back to the dealer for its very first service by the previous owner, and that's it. It never went to a Honda dealer again. This bike has ABS. That is it. That is the sum total of its electronics. Okay, it has a few other electronics. It has fuel injection and stuff like that, but it isn't absolutely loaded with cruise control radar and electronic suspension and everything like that. This bike, being a Honda as well, uh, it's just gonna run and run and run. All I need to do is change the oil and the oil filter and check the air filter every now and then. So bikes do exist that don't keep us linked to that dealer that you just own and ride and do the odd bit of maintenance with. So what I'm saying is as well, so when you buy, when you buy, when you buy a bike, have a thought to the servicing costs. Look, we all pay for tires, chains, fuel, insurance, tax, and everything like that. But one of the great differentiators as well is how a dealer supports or how a brand supports their bike after that in terms of warranty and service packages. Um, it can make a huge difference to your ownership at the end of the day. Well, I think we should give out some awards and the gold medal goes to BMW Motorrad for their multi-year service packs. Yeah, very commendable, very commendable. Silver goes to Ducati with their transparent service program. And I must say, that's an extremely close silver to BMW's gold. And bronze goes to Suzuki with their service activated warranty. Something I haven't seen anybody else do. What a great idea. And as you see, some of those programs, that Suzuki program is, is only offered by Suzuki GB. It's not offered in Europe or, well, if it is, it's under a different guise. What uh, offerings are there in terms of warranty and service in your area? Let us know down in the comments if there's something weird and wonderful that any of the manufacturers do in your area that you think is a great idea. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Yeah, yeah, head of marketing, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll hold, yeah. Beg your pardon?
He doesn't want to speak to me. It, 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 it's a very prestigious award I'll have, you know. That's very rude. They didn't want it. They didn't want me award. <laughs>